Now, you are probably familiar with the blood types A, B, AB and O, but have you ever heard of the Bombay or the Vel negative? Well, in today's science segment, we're going to talk a bit more about those rare blood types. Julia Seeger, our science editor, is with me. And Julia, first of all, just explain to us sort of how the blood type system actually works. Well, actually, our blood is classified into different types indeed, and that's actually linked to the presence or the absence of certain antigens. So if you're type A, you're going to have uh, A antigen. If it's type B, it's B antigen, and so on and so forth. And that's going to help then determine optimal compatibility for a blood transfusion. Now, the traditional classification, as we all know, is the ABO system uh, with the eight most common groups that you just cited there. Uh, and that actually covers 98% of all transfusion needs. But what people don't actually know is that there are hundreds of other type of mm. blood uh, throughout the world. And here in France, about 390, actually, and we're still discovering more every day. And what's happening is that here, for instance, today in France, at least, we consider there are 250 rare blood types. So that's going to affect about 700,000 to a million people, but there are only 10% of people who actually know that they carry this rare type of blood. Mm. And the reason why is because it's often later on in life when they have to have a transfusion that they're going to have an in-depth genetic uh, investigation and find that out. So we consider a rare blood to be rare uh, when there are fewer than four people out of a thousand who carry this blood. But there are even rarer bloods. So you, you said it, the Bombay blood group, for instance, it's one person out of a million in Europe. And the rarest blood of all in the world is actually called Arish um, RH null. Uh, it's also called the golden blood, if you will. And uh, there are only 50 people uh, throughout the world who have that blood. Wow, extraordinary. And how can we explain this, the rarity in certain kinds of blood groups like that one? Well, Nadia, we can talk about the rarity, but we could also talk about this increasing diversity mm. in uh, the different blood types that we have, which is tightly linked to the evolution of humanity, but also to the different migrations that we went through throughout the centuries. So today, most of humanity is actually O positive and A, uh, A, um, A positive as well. But if you actually look a little closer to B positive, for instance, in the region of Asia, for instance, there are m many more people people who have B plus compared to Europe, for instance. And that's actually linked to the Mongol expansion of the 13th century. The reason why is because you have those blood types that are going to prevail because perhaps they were uh, protecting populations from th certain threats like pathogens, for instance. And that's what happened in Africa with the gene for sickle cell anemia. Mm. It became very uh, prominent common because it helped resist against malaria in the first place. So it's often found in Africa today because of that, but we can also find it in the Caribbean. And the reason why is because this genetic modification actually took the historical route, the slave route towards the Caribbean as well. Mm. That's why we also find it a lot in the Caribbean. Now, blood type is therefore linked to genetics, geographical origin, migrations, and natural selection. But you have to understand that your blood type may be rare in one region, but not in another. So let me just give you an example. If you're RH negative, you're European, but you live in China, mm. you might have a rare blood it's considered as rare blood in China, but mm. it wouldn't be considered rare blood in Europe. Uh, so, so you know, the challenge now is really going to be linked to all of the blood banks. I was going to say, so I imagine those blood banks now playing a crucial role as we learn more about all of this. Indeed, because now they have to reflect much more ethnicity, much more diversity in the blood samples that they have. And here in France, actually, we're, we're very much advanced in uh, these blood banks. We have the most diversified blood supply uh, with about uh, 8,300 frozen samples. So France today regularly is sought after by the United States by a European colleagues, Canada, Australia, to actually send some of those blood samples abroad. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Really interesting. Julia Seeger for us there, our science editor.